Hola, ¿cómo está? Bien, MCC is a federally qualified health center, and so the majority of our patients are on Medi-Cal or uninsured, and most of our patients fall well below the federal poverty line. 059082. The majority of our patients are Spanish speaking, many of whom are new arrivals. They're facing a lot of challenges, and what I see when they come in to take care of their children is there are hopes for their children and their children's future. Hi, buenas tardes, ¿cómo están? When I first heard about the ACEs study, I think there was a part of me that said, of course, if we experience really significant trauma and hardship, that can impact us. ACEs is this fabulous reminder of there's this context to what we're doing. And so if I make a prescription or a plan without any understanding of what's going on with them, we're not going to get very far. One of the things that's really powerful about our involvement with a learning collaborative, especially in a field that's as new as this response to ACEs, is that we're all kind of sorting through it together. When you first tell people we're going to ask all our patients about their traumatic childhood, that doesn't necessarily go over well. Not so much that people weren't willing, but that they were nervous and wanted to be protective of their patients and of themselves. That was the beginning of this journey for us, and that was made possible by Resilient Beginnings. Their trainers came out and did the trainings for our staff. What we decided to do after we did the clinic-wide training, we created many customized trainings for each care team involved in the screening process. We did a training for the medical assistants because they would be the people that would actually be presenting the screen. We did a training for the providers because they would be the ones reviewing the screen. I think learning about ACEs has been very essential, especially in our position here at the front office, as we are like the first front of the line, right, when a patient walks in, making sure that we are actually actively listening, making sure our tone, body language, and choice of words don't cause any triggers to our patients, and always making sure that they feel understood, and that's what we're here for, to help them, guide them through anything that they may need. So I actually had a patient that I completed the ACEs screening. We did it over the phone, and I want to say like a month later he came in person to thank me because I guess there was a lot that he had inside that wasn't able to talk about it with anyone. I just know that they feel heard and they know that there's hope. One of the biggest learning pieces for us was how powerful just doing the screen is, that the screen itself is, is an intervention. A lot of our staff was concerned that we're going to uncover all kinds of trauma and not have enough resources to be able to respond and support our patients. And so we actually did a lot of groundwork on that before we started rolling out the screenings. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we have a nutrition team. We have groups about sleep. There's so many pieces to the puzzle that are all embedded right Right here at MCC. Behavioral health is part of the puzzle and a very important part. This is a fully functioning medical center with behavioral health services embedded in rather than being an outpatient behavioral health service. So if a pediatrician sees something that they're concerned about, they can consult with one of us in real time and we can be able to provide some support right there in the moment. So it just makes it much more easy for that continuity of care. As MCC has moved through this journey of becoming a trauma-informed agency. Simultaneously, they started investing in this idea of complex care, case management. Uh -huh. I've provided case management in a variety of settings outside of a primary care clinic, mm -hmm. but now working within a primary care clinic, an integrated primary care clinic, I'll never go back. I mean, I feel like this is the model. Patients that get enrolled in complex care they are typically the most vulnerable patients we serve. They tend to have multiple chronic health conditions, behavioral health diagnosis, and a lot of psychosocial needs. So naturally, the complex care 
team has gravitated toward the RBN team where we're partnering to really figure out how to respond to the needs in a way that benefits the whole family, the whole patient. Do you know if any of our homeless partners have seen them or know who they are? If you can address and potentially interrupt ACEs as you go, you have an opportunity to change their whole lives. I began going to Marin Community Clinic around 2018. At Marin Community Clinic, my family and I have received everything from food to meditation classes, chiropractic care, as well as physician care. I have a daughter, Danny. Danny's been having a lot of trouble with sensory and emotional issues. Her pediatrician reached out to someone and we finally got a diagnosis. She was diagnosed with high functioning autism. And with the diagnosis, we received the case manager. The case manager has been a huge support that opened doors for more help as far as like one-on-one -on -one therapy. I'm just trying to give Danny the best care that I can as a parent. Danny is doing well. How you like my nails? She can do well because we believe in her, the doctors believe in her, and we just doing what we have to do to make sure that she's okay. I see it every day, the difference that we make. I hear it in the patient's stories. There's no better feeling in the world than that. I think we're heading in the right direction. You know, I've spent my career responding to the effects of ACEs and I would love to spend the rest of it preventing them from happening in the first place. The RBN has really transformed the way I look at my work, partly because I feel so much more embedded in a team, a team that's really looking at not just the whole child, but sometimes the whole family. That feels really hopeful to me and it feels like so much more than when we were focused on illness. And we've got to do that too, but I think this broadening of the scope of what we do is much more powerful.